In this video, I'm going to explain how you can identify the declension and stem of a noun when you are looking at the dictionary entry for the word. So first, let's take a look at some words. When you look in a dictionary or on a vocab list, you'll see the words listed like this. It will always give you two words and then the gender. And this first word is always the nominative usually the nominative singular. There's a few exceptions where they give you the nominative plural, but almost always nominative singular. And the second word is always the genitive singular. And this is what we're going to use to identify the declension. Because if we look back at our noun endings real quick, you'll see that when you look at the different declension endings, no matter what gender it is, they share the same genitive singular ending in that declension. So, first declension's genitive singular is AE. Second declension, which could be masculine or neuter words, both of them, the genitive singular is I. And for third declension, which could have masculine, feminine, or neuter words, for both of them, the genitive singular is IS. And these are going to be consistent forms that will tell us what declension a noun is. So, first declension nouns will have their genitive singular as AE. Second will have I. And third declension will have IS. So if we look back at the vocab list, we can see femina, feminae, AE means it's first. Amicus, amici, that I tells us that this is a second declension word. Bellum belli, that I tells us it's second as well. When we see mater matris, that tells us it is third. Same with senex senis. That is also third, and iter itineris is also third. So that is how you identify the declension of a noun. And it's also going to be how you identify the stem of a noun. Because to identify the stem of a noun, which is what you attach all of the other endings to, you remove that genitive ending, which means that femina, feminae take off the AE, and your stem is femin. Okay, your stem for amicus amici, take off that genitive ending, and there's your stem. Bellum belli, take off that genitive ending, and there's your stem. So, the genitive form without the genitive ending is the stem of a noun. Now, some people think you can just take off the nominative, and for some words, that does work. Notice that there's no difference here. But when you look at words that, are, especially words in the third declension, you can't just take off the nominative ending. One, because you might not be sure what exactly the ending is. Remember that anything ending. But another reason is that the stem can change from nominative to genitive. And the, the genitive is where you're going to find the consistent stem. So to, for the stem of mater, take off that is. Matra is your stem. For senex, take off that is. Sen is your stem. And for iter, take off that is. And itiner is your stem. Okay? Let's take a look at a couple of words that are a little tricky. And these are the words where you can really see, okay, this is where I need to pay attention to the genitive. Okay? Because right here, if we see that R, you might think that doesn't end in us and, or that doesn't end in um, and thus it must be third. But if you look at the genitive ending, that I tells us that this word is in fact a second declension word, even though it doesn't end in us or um. There are a few exceptions. You might also have a word that ends in us and really looks like a second declension masculine word, but then if you look at the genitive here, you see an IS, and that tells you it's third declension. 
okay? And like I said before, paying attention to the genitive is also going to help you find the stem of a third declension word because sometimes the stem, sometimes you just add an IS and your stem looks a lot like your nominative, like with arbor. But there are also words where the stem changes when you get to the genitive. So pater, your stem is not pater, your stem is patra, and you're going to know that because you took the genitive form and took off the ending. So these are examples of words where paying attention to the genitive and not just the nominative is really important. So to summarize all of that, when you're identifying the declension of a noun, you look at its genitive ending. If that genitive ending is AE, it's a first declension noun. If it's I, then that's a second declension noun. If it's IS, then that's a third declension noun. You don't look at the nominative, you only look at the genitive. And if you want to make the stem of a noun, you take that genitive form and you remove the genitive ending, and that will be the stem of the noun.